I was distracted in the beginning and I felt this was not for me. Uh, I would I, I shouldn't be lying right. Forget 100% even to cover 70-80% it's difficult the mm. entire syllabus. And even after you cover it is difficult to retain whatever you had covered. Mm. So it is very natural to feel uh, nervous or mm. very easy to question yourself and even feel regretful about it when the exams are one month away. Uh, one more thing is some people will pick up a theory subject and subject and they'll say I'll finish this in seven days but it's better to span it over the course of months rather than do it all together if you do it over a period of two three two to three months whatever you would be doing in seven days little by little thoda thoda every day okay Sara revise everything on Sunday and one day you'll definitely be a CA so I also believe in this concept of little by little that is the effect of compounding that things don't happen overnight. It has to happen over a period of time. Hello everyone. Welcome to Camomile Tea with Toppers, an initiative by Unacademy. My name is Vikram Totlani and today we have with us Satvik, who is a CA Intermediate Topper. Hello, Satvik. Hi. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good. Thank you for uh, having me. Pleasure to have you on board. And uh, how is how is it feeling right now being on uh, Camomile TV with Toppers? And how have you watched any of her videos before? I'm feeling good, but also a little bit nervous. And yeah, I have watched some of your videos. Can you tell me more about yourself, your introduction, your educational background, your parents and family? So I was born in the coastal area of Karnataka and I did my schooling there till 12th and uh, all throughout I have been good at academics. Uh, my father is a chartered accountant in practice and uh, my mother is a government teacher. So it was my father because of whom I chose to do CA as well. Uh, there was no other specific reason why I wanted to be here. Uh, and after I finished my 12th in 2022, and after that, I gave my CA foundation in June 2022. After that, uh, I've given my I've given my CA intermediate in November 2023. Okay. And uh, I cleared November 2023 with exemption in all the papers. Okay. Satvik, as you told that your father was a CA and he was your inspiration behind getting into CA preparation. Uh, so was it that your father wanted you to be a CA or was, was it more of an intrinsic motiv motivation? to get into CA and it was more of your interest towards this field? Uh, I feel uh, my father always wanted me to be a CA and continue his practice. He did not directly tell me. He wanted me to decide for myself. But I always knew that he wanted me to be a CA. So I did not give it a second thought when I was okay. choosing between science and commerce and I directly came into commerce. Now I have some questions regarding your preparations which will be helpful uh, to our future aspirants. So, how was your preparation uh, strategy like and when did you start preparing for CA Intermediate since you already cleared foundation? I had given my CA foundation as I said in June 2022 and our results were out in August. So, they say that if you are sure that you are going to clear, it's better to start your preparation early. Because in Intermediate we have eight, we ha used to have 8 subjects, now it is 6 but then they used to say that when you have 8 subjects and we are given a time limit of 8 months, so eight months, it is really difficult to cover eight subjects in eight months and also to retain all those things. So they, they were telling us that it is better if you start before your results, out, uh, foundation results, if you're sure that you'll be clearing. Okay. Uh, but uh, I took a lot of time uh, in selecting my teachers. Okay. So because of that, uh, all the time after CA foundation till the result was spent in searching for the teachers, which I wouldn't suggest anyone to do. I would say pick one teacher and just start preparing. Okay. So I wasted some time, all, all the time here searching for teachers and uh, I did, I, by the time I got my teachers, it was almost the end of August. Then I started. Initially, I thought I'll do every class live, an academy of live classes. So I thought I would do every class live. Soon laziness crept in and I thought I would do some classes recorded. I had started with all the four subjects of intermediate. In intermediate, uh, when you're preparing, like when you start preparing for the first group, usually people start for the first group and then okay. go to the second group. So when I started for the first group, so time schedule usually is since there are four subjects, the teachers take classes 
of one and half to two hours per subject. Okay. So it would take. I used to wake up in the morning. Classes would start at nine and it would end till it would it would go on till seven eight in the evening. So it was really getting very hectic. Okay. And I was not used to this much hectic schedule because earlier I used to be in schools. It is more like uh, you have. These are time you have games period and all these things. And here, all of a sudden, you have to sit in front of the camera and you know sit from the morning till the evening. I don't know because of me or the schedule, I I pushed two subjects away. Okay. And I stuck to only taxation, which I was watching live, and I was I picked up another subject recorded. I started this almost in the beginning of and uh, the end of August, beginning of September. Okay. And uh, it went on till February March. Okay. And by that time, I had almost completed six out of eight subjects. Now, there are two subjects: audit and EISSM. Okay. And uh, I had not touched those subjects. So I was in April, and I had not touched these two subjects. I had only done the first six subjects. I was not feeling confident because I wanted to, you know, uh, score good marks and also I wanted to score a rank. Till the end of March, I had completed six subjects out of eight. So. I was. I had not started two subjects. Like I had gone through little bit, but not seriously. It was almost the first week of April, okay. and I started uh, feel getting very anxious because the exam was one month away. Since these two subjects are theory subjects, audit and EISSM, they required a little bit more effort from my side okay. because I was good at practical subjects and not so good at theory subjects. And because of the anxiety, I was not never used to. F- Failing anything, okay. so I did not want to fail this as well. So I decided to skip an attempt. Okay. I was very, I was feeling very sad, and I told my parents, and they were also like, "It's fine, just just six months. You can give your exam in the next attempt." I decided to skip, but after skipping, I had other friends who decided to give their exam, even if they had not completely, they were not completely sure of their preparation. When they gave their exams, I used, to, I felt, I was, I felt regret. I thought I should have given my exams. Because of that, I started feeling very sad, and I was not able to study after that. So after that, I I thought I'll go to my father's office, and I'll I, for a change of mind, I went there and I interned there for two three months. And after that, I came back and resumed my studies. This time, uh, I knew what mistakes I had done. I knew I had very little time, so okay. I again started preparing. And, and uh, it was a pressurizing situation. Said some of your Friends already cleared the exam and moved ahead, and I am sure a lot of our uh, aspirants who are preparing right now would be in a similar situation. So, how would you recommend them to go about this? So, I feel uh, no matter how you prepared, no matter how many hours you put in, uh, when your exams are one month away, you will you will feel that anxiety yeah. because it's difficult to first of all cover the entire syllabus, and after you cover, it is even difficult. Forget hundred percent, even. To cover seventy, eighty percent, it's difficult. The mm-hmm. entire syllabus, and even after you cover, it is difficult to retain whatever you had covered. Okay. So it is very natural to feel uh, nervous mm-hmm. or very easy to question yourself and even feel regretful about it when the exams are one month away. But I feel no matter whatever the situation is, I would never recommend anyone to skip an attempt. It's very important to go ahead and face the exams than skip an attempt and mm-hmm. lose your time. Right now, there are three attempts in a year. So the motivation to skip an attempt is even more because you only have four months in between, right? But I would not recommend this to anyone. If you have prepared, if you have worked for seven months, it is important to go ahead and give the exams. So coming from taking an attempt after skipping an attempt, since you cleared CA Foundation in uh, your first go, so was it more challenging because you had a past memory that you cleared it in first attempt? And now suddenly, when C intermediate came in, you skipped an attempt. Was there any connection with the previous exam? Yeah. So uh, my C A foundation exams had gone really well. Okay. And uh, I had scored three forty two out of four hundred. Okay. And uh, right now they are not giving any ranks for C A foundation. But if there was a, if they had given ranks like before, I would have come in the top twenty five or something. Okay. Uh, all India level. So I was a very, like I was a lot confident about intermediate as well. But after I skipped, you know, uh, I was never used to doing skipping an exam. You are not allowed to skip an exam in your tenth or twelfth or anywhere. So after skipping an exam, uh, I, I lost all the confidence in myself as well. 
and uh, as you mentioned that you prepared online when you approached the CA intermediate exam so was this your first uh, experience learning online and how did you find an academy as a platform i would say online is not for everyone uh, there are two kinds of people one who uh, require you know someone to watch they find it difficult to focus for a very long period of time they they are distracted they can't sit at a place they just want to roam here and there they want people to talk to they can't sit alone for long hours you know these kind of people it's better if they go for on- offline classes because there you'll go with the flow you don't have any opportunity to escape yeah but when it comes to online classes all the power is with you you can study for 8 hours 10 hours or you can skip studying as well right Correct. you every the, all the power is with you you can skip you can watch at a later point of time the same liberty is not there in the offline classes so if you think you are very disciplined you are very focused in that case going for online classes is good but you have never been someone who has sat at a place and studied for long hours yeah. it's better to go for offline class makes sense so during a preparation journey since you were preparing online was there any educator that you looked up to since as you st- mentioned that people f- struggle with choosing their educator and then going ahead with it yeah. and they shouldn't spend a lot of time doing that yeah. so was there any educator that kept you inspired and you like their way of teaching so uh, we had an uh, i had an educator called arvind tuli he teaches taxation i think he still teaches in an academy okay uh, his way of teaching the subject was very different from others everyone else you know wanted to complete the syllabus but he wanted us to get the entire picture he wanted us to prepare to be the real cs tomorrow right he wanted us to uh, know the law in its entire depth okay he wanted uh, he just didn't want us to you know like preparing someone to score marks in the exam is easy Correct. but preparing someone to face the real life challenges is different yeah and it's difficult so he is someone who always believed in that and even if uh, his the time of covering a syllabus uh, he took a little bit more time he yeah. made sure that each and everyone uh, understands the syllabus and will also be able to uh, apply it in real life okay after studying from him it's been like almost uh, one one and a half year since okay. i finished my taxation syllabus even now i remember whatever he had studied whatever he had taught me so uh, that was the uh, level of his teaching and he always had a motto little by little thoda thoda every day okay sara revise everything on sunday and one day you'll definitely be a ca so i also believe in this concept of little by little that is the effect of compounding that things don't happen overnight it has to happen over a period of time you do little by little every day and one day you'll definitely reach there yeah definitely i think uh, power of compounding really matters when it comes to entrance exams uh, but how did your preparation schedule look like since you said that online preparation is more of a self discipline thing so how did you schedule your day so that you didn't feel uh, distracted and you kept taking off your goals as i said uh, i was distracted in the beginning and i felt this was not for me uh, i would I, i shouldn't be lying right i shouldn't be saying that i was on time in the beginning i was uh, but then i got distracted and after i skipped an attempt when i came back i um, i try i try to maintain Uh, my day better i used to have a to do list at night what and all i'll be doing in the next day i feel we shouldn't be having tight uh, fixed schedules like no. I th- I, again i also feel that it depends on from person to person someone might prefer having a fixed schedule every day or someone might uh, want to mix things and do someone might want to focus on a single subject someone might want to mix things and do so it depends from person to person um i preferred doing one or two subjects not more so i used to do so i used to have my to do list and do uh, one subject for half a day and another subject for another half i would do uh, theory subjects in the morning because i would have some energy to study because i did not like theory subjects okay. and whenever i felt sleepy i would do the practical subjects i would uh, plug in music and solve the problems okay uh so satvik as we know that there are a group of eight subjects in ca intermediate and people can take it as per uh, their choice so how did you approach the point of choosing multiple subjects at a time and what were your weak and strong areas 
so people can either go for one group or they can go for both the groups okay now i think um, this depends on multiple things if you were someone who was always good academically then i think giving both the groups is better because you will finish the things in a faster span of time and uh, if you give both the groups together there is also this benefit advantage of set offs no okay. uh, which i'm sure everyone knows but at the same time if you're not so good academically and you don't feel confident to give both the groups you you have to it is better if you go with one group another thing is i would suggest not to decide whether to go for one or both the groups in the beginning itself uh, it's better to start with one group okay and after 4 to 5 months of your preparation uh, ideally this is the time when you would should be finishing one group okay and um, by 4 to 5 months when you finish the syllabus of one group um, and then you look back and you feel you retain things and you are confident that you will be hand, you will be capable of handling this the subjects in the first group only mm-hmm. then you should be going to the second group if you feel you are not so confident with this subject these three subjects then it's better not to go for the other group okay one more thing is uh, some people combine subjects like yeah. they decide in the beginning itself that they'll be doing two groups and they'll take one subject from the first group and another subject from the second group okay one problem with this is that after 5 to 6 months if you've done two subjects from one group and one subject from the other group yeah. and then you don't feel confident now it is difficult to say i'll only give one group because you have also taken one subject from the other group correct so it's better to restrict yourself to first group in the beginning and only after you're confident with that go to the second because eventually i think since if you would mix the subjects you would uh, be in a, again in a similar situation of skipping the exam since yeah you yeah. would not be sure of how which groups do you want to yeah. go ahead with yeah. once i would suggest once you have chosen to give both the groups and you have very little time left and you have done everything in, in the past it's better not to skip anything and just go and give everything you have so out of uh, the entire subject list that you had so what was your strong and weak areas and how did you identify them and how did you overcome them uh as i said uh, uh, my favorite teacher educator was arvind thuli okay. so and uh, i had focused a lot on taxation right he he used to teach taxation taxation is a very vast subject it is equivalent to 2.53 sub three other subjects okay so taxation since i had done life since the beginning Uh, i was very comfortable with taxation so taxation was a strong subject for me other than that all the practical subjects including accounts cost fm all these things were strong for me i was not so good at theory subjects okay. mainly eis sm and law so uh, the subjects which you were weak in how did you overcome that since you knew that this is the par minimum that you have to cover in order to clear the exam so how did you approach the weak points and yeah so as i earlier mentioned about uh, you know little by little uh, theory subjects it's difficult to cover everything on a single day so i used to keep one or two hours max for okay. theory subjects and uh, towards the end of the exam so that i remember stuff is like you got to memorize some things in theory subject so in the last one or two months i used to keep one 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 to two hours for each theory subjects to revise these theory subjects and in the gap i used to do the practical subjects towards the end that i remember thing uh, one more thing is some people will pick up a theory subject and subject and they'll say i'll finish this in 7 days but it's better to span it over the course of months rather than do it all together if you do it over a period of 2 3 2 to 3 months whatever you would be doing in 7 days by giving at least a w- one hour every day that is better than doing it at once because i think that would help you retaining yeah. uh, the concept over a period of time when you actually at, at appear for the exam so apart from your preparation strategy and the educators that you studied from how important do you think was uh, appearing for mock tests in this journey yeah so i think uh, i g- have given one mock test per subject if you do not give mock test uh, when you appear for the exams you will not be knowing uh, whether whatever when you are giving exams whether you are going fast or slow you will not be knowing so uh, there is a problem with going fast you might you know uh, you might make some errors like there are big questions 20 mark questions you might make mistake in the first step only and you might lose the entire 20 mark because of some calculation yeah. error so there is some problem with going fast as well yeah. there is some problem in going slow you may not be able to cover the entire paper okay. so 
so the so the, both the things are there so to know whether you're going fast or going slow it's important that you give a mock test and face it before you actually go and appear in the exam so i think it helps in time management so apart from the long term goal of clearing ca intermediate exam since you had a duration of 6 to 8 months how did you approach you know your short term goals as to within week what should you do within a month what should you do and how did you tick off those goals uh, i did not have uh, goals for a week or a month i used to have daily goals i used to make sure that i finish my daily goals so satvik as you said that the entire journey of ca intermediate preparation is 6 to 8 month long and retaining whatever you learned in the first month becomes a dif- difficult problem later on so how did you go about your revision strategy at the last minute or overall okay so i feel uh, the, the practical subjects where you have to solve things like cost fm and accounts i think you will be retaining most of the things you have studied and it's the theory subjects which you will not be retaining so uh, it's better to give one or two hours for every theory subject every theory subject when you're revising it yeah. i would recommend for practical subjects to quickly go through the marathons the educators have online uh so that you can cover the entire syllabus in a faster uh, in a limited uh, span of time rather than uh, if you yourself sit and do this problems uh, it may take a longer time so it you can you can combine marathons with you know your own uh, problems and do i think it, you can do it faster if you do it that way so satvik as you told that your father was a ca and you started preparing looking up to him for inspiration so was there any fear uh, in the journey of preparation and how did you overcome any of those fears um as i said that since i was academically strong uh, i was very confident about myself but the only fear was whether i'll be able to complete the syllabus in the given span of time or not because that was very challenging to sit for long hours every day as you told that you appeared for mock tests per subject and you opt- attempted the mock tests towards the end of your preparation do you have a regret that you could have started your mock tests earlier itself so that you could keep your better track of preparation uh, no regret as such but uh, i would suggest after after finishing the syllabus of one group to revise it once and give mock tests for one group and then go for the second group i think that could be a strategy that could be one of the things people can look for so satvik uh, how was the result day like after this much effort into the exam and skipping an attempt and then finally coming up to the result day how was it and how was your family's reaction to the result and who found out about the result first uh uh-huh. so as i said after skipping an attempt my exams had gone really well the next attempt uh, when i had given in november 2023 the, uh, my exams had gone really well so i was expecting a rank as well my result was on the day of my orientation so we have an orientation course and At, at that time my result was announced uh, i was in the class okay. orientation class and uh, when my result was announced i had only my friends around and not my family so i was since i was expecting a rank <clears throat> i did not get one so i was little disappointed that day okay. uh, that day i was really disappointed but uh, my parents were happy everyone around me was happy only i was uh, little dis- disappointed from the inside but from the next day i realized that Uh, at one point I, i had skipped an attempt and now i have come to a point where i have scored exemption in all subjects and i'm feeling bad about it and i should be I shouldn't be doing it and i should be actually proud of myself so after some days i, I recovered and i was much feeling much better about it so satvik since you said that uh, preparing online is more of a self discipline thing so do you think that having a peer group that can keep you motivated during a preparation journey helps and were you were there any friends that you that are preparing alongside you yeah i feel it does help because uh, it helps you to solve doubts it helps you to share your feelings it helps you to tell you that you're not alone like your the your the friends are also going through the same things they're also feeling through self doubt and stuff like that so if you're doing online classes if you're doing live online classes there'll be people in the chat box so you can connect to them through telegram or something so i had connected to a few people and uh, i was in co- co- connection with them throughout and we used to share our fears we used to share our doubts i think and i think it does help so satvik thank you so much for sharing your preparation strategy and i hope that will be helpful to a lot of aspirants who are preparing right now 
Now, since we want to end the video on a lighter note, let's move on to a more fun segment, which is a rapid fire questions. I'll ask you some questions and you will have to immediately answer them without thinking much. If you had to change your name, what would your name be and why would you choose that name? I wouldn't want to change my name. Uh, what is the most interesting thing that you have read or seen this year? I watched an anime called Vinland Saga. Uh, what is something most people do easily but you find very difficult? Uh, outdoor sports. Okay. Uh, what movie has everyone else seen but you haven't seen so far? KGF. If you had the world's attention for 30 seconds, what would you like to say? Uh, make the world a better place, share love and not hate. Wow, nice. Uh, would you leave your hometown forever or stay in your hometown forever? I would stay in my hometown forever. Okay. Is there any app that you hate? but you anyways use Instagram. If you could change one thing about your upbringing, what would it be? Uh, I think I was mostly at home, which made me an introvert. I, if I would want to change something, I would want to go out more. Okay. What are you most looking forward to in your next five to 10 years? Uh, first of all, I would want to clear CA and uh, you know build a brand for myself. If you could learn any language fluently, what would it be? It would be Telugu. Okay. So one last question. Uh, what's something that you have tried that you'll never ever try again? Eating ragi ball. So that was our rapid fire round and for your fun and quirky answers, we have a hamper for you. Thank you. Here it is. Thank you so much Satvik for sharing your valuable time and advice with our aspirants. Is there anything that you would like to tell about today's experience? This was my first experience on camera. I'm really grateful and I thank you for providing me this opportunity to be on camera and I wish and hope that I'll be on camera for a many more times in the future. So Satvik, do you have any message to our aspirants uh, who are preparing right now for the CA intermediate or any CA exam right now? Uh, I would like to say that CA is not about intelligence or your smartness. Acing CA is more about consistency, doing the same things, doing the same boring things every day, taking little steps every day and ultimately reaching your goal. And when you'll be there on the other side, you'll be really proud of your journey. So Satvik, uh, do you know any topper in your circle that you would like to nominate who can come to CWT and share their story with our aspirants? I have a friend called Sajan and uh, I think he's a very hardworking person and he cleared both the groups of the year intermediate in May 23 attempt and I would like to tag him. So Sajan, Chamomile Tea with Toppers team would soon reach out to you for one such interview and we hope to see your story on this camera on this side. Thank you so much Satvik for coming and sharing your advice with our aspirants and spending your valuable time with us. We wish you all the best for your future exams and we hope to see you again after you clear your CA final exam here again. Thank you to you and the entire team for having me here. So that's it for today. I hope ki aapko Satvik ki story se kuch inspiration mila hoga apni journey ke liye, apne preparation ke liye. On that note, we will end this episode. Let's crack it.